So we go to the first um, application, which is eight, land to the west of Harlow Playhouse, College Gate. And Ross, you're dealing with that? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application concerns land to the west of Harlow Town Centre. It spans ac uh, across approximately 1.3 hectares. The site is etched in red on the slide, and it comprises uh, vacant brownfield land that previously sited Acacio House, an access road to the Harvey Centre multi-storey car park via Hayden's Road, Playhouse Square, a turning circle providing a taxi and drop-off point for visitors using facilities in Harlow Town Centre and the Playhouse Theatre, College Square, which is a turning area to the south of St Paul's Church, including accessible car parking, and pedestrian and servicing access surrounding St Paul's Church. Uh, a pede the, the pedestrian underpass beneath Hayden's Road also forms part of this application. These images show the existing site. That's from uh, Hayden's Road. So Harlow District Council has been awarded £19.6 million following a successful bid to, the, to secure funding from the government's levelling up fund, and this is to support plans to deliver a new mixed-use arts and cultural quarter. The proposed development would form the new Western Gateway into Harlow Town Centre and build upon the existing and cultural use offer of the Harlow Playhouse. The proposed development is focused around an underutilised area of land, and the money awarded to the council would secure its long-term future through the delivery of the following element elements. Block E, which is a two-storey dedicated arts building with flexible performance and creative arts studio spaces, which uh, providing rehearsal, dance, teaching, hire and classes. Music school with rehearsal and recording space, a new cafe and booking office with ancillary spaces and facilities. And this building has been designed to complement and expand upon the existing offer of the neighbouring Playhouse Theatre building. And this is an image of what it would look like uh, facing towards the northwest. The other component would uh, be Block ABC. This is a part five and part six storey mixed use building comprising flexible ground floor commercial floor space uh, and 47 one and two bedroom flats above. And these would be 100% affordable. It's an image of the proposed building. And there would also be an extensive public realm, including hard and soft landscaping, an outdoor performance space, uh, seating play areas and a children's pocket park. All of these core elements would be supported by a new access road to the south of Block ABC to replace College Gate, and this would create direct continued access across uh, between Hayden's Road and the Playhouse and Water Garden servicing yards. These are some of the uh, images of the proposed landscaping and square. And this is a site plan, and this is a bird's eye image. So the key considerations of the application were that the principal development is acceptable in a town centre location, and the scheme aligns with the local plan and town centre master plan framework. The local plan encourages the development of the visitor economy, particularly in relation to arts and cultural attractions. And the scheme would also help to diversify Harlow's evening and nighttime economy by encouraging more people to the town centre. It would also have a positive effect on other town centre uses, such as leisure food and beverage outlets. The commercial uses would be restricted from 7am till midnight, balanced, and these are balanced to support the nighttime economy whilst protecting residential amenity in a town centre location. Block E would be sui generis, meaning that's a class of its own, whilst ground floor uh, the ground floor of block ABC would be restricted to class F1 and F2 to facilitate the goal of achieving an arts and cultural quarter. Such uses would allow for the provision of education, display of artworks, museums and community uses. So as mentioned just previously, it would uh, block ABC would contain 47 affordable one and two bed flats. Uh, these would be 100% affordable. All would provide compliance space standards and good outlook and aspect with private amenity space. There would be the provision of five wheelchair accessible units with their own parking provision 
and a communal amenity deck at first floor level, which would be accessible to all residents. The scheme has evolved uh, through pre-application consultation and the proposed height, massing, built form and layout is considered to represent a high quality design that would function well for its intended end use. It promotes visual attractiveness and is considered to be sympathetic to the surrounding built environment and the history of Harlow. And our urban design officers have reviewed the scheme and consider it acceptable. The scheme has also considered the impact to the, uh, to the heritage assets on the site, which is St. Paul's Church. This is a grade two listed building. The reports, uh, the application includes a townscape impact assessment and heritage statement, and both conclude the scheme would have a moderate to substantial and positive impact on the townscape. The heritage officers consider to have it, it would lead to a worse, less than, uh, less than substantial harm, but in national policy, this is weighed against the significant public benefits. The development would also better frame the views of the church and improve its setting and character as shown on this image. The public square would include an outdoor performance space with extensive hard and soft landscaping and the applicant has submitted a high quality lighting scheme for the public realm and buildings. It would help to achieve uh, approximately 11% biodiversity net gain across the site. The scheme would also deliver improvement works to the Haydens Road underpass. And the following image shows it what it might look like in the night time. Essex Police have reviewed, reviewed the design and consider it acceptable. These um, subject to conditions, one of which would be the submission of a public realm management plan and uh, the achievement of secure by design. Highways have reviewed the scheme and consider it acceptable. The scheme would be car free with the exception of replacement accessible parking, which is currently available, as well as spaces for accessible units. Uh, additional standard parking spaces would be provided to the rear of the church for its users. It would include EV charging, cycle spaces and cycling and walking improvement um, works to Haydens Road. Uh, during the determination, the, some amendments have been made to the scheme to improve the potential conflict between road users and pedestrians on the new access road. This has resulted in the turning circle and taxi rank being enlarged to minimise the number of vehicles needing to pass by the pocket park entrance. Uh, some other key considerations, it's been assessed to be acceptable in regard to daylight, sunlight and noise. It would achieve a 50% reduction in site-wide CO2 emissions and would include PV panels and air source heat pumps. The site is in flood zone one and would include a sustainable drainage system. And the ecological benefits, as mentioned, would include biodiversity net gain and an increased number of trees. And just, so the, uh, just to conclude, these are the key benefits of the scheme. So this would be continued regeneration of Harlow Town Centre to enable the expansion of the visitor and nighttime economies. It would create new temporary and permanent job opportunities. It would provide dedicated spaces to enable local creativity and expression, energy efficient affordable units in the town centre, high quality contemporary design that enhances the setting of St Paul's Church, new public realm, a children's play area, improvement works to the Haydens Road underpass, biodiversity net gain, sustainable drainage system and financial contributions towards early years in childcare and libraries. And therefore it's resolved that the Development Management Committee grant permission subject to planning conditions listed in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ross. Uh, I've got uh, a number of speakers in this, this uh, application. I've got Mr. Alan Leverett first, if you'd like to come forward, who's against it. Press the red button. Good evening, councillors and uh, officers. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about the application, but I want to the point out that I'm not against regeneration. I'm against the way this application is being presented. Um, the first point I've got to make is that I did put these points uh, in writing to the planning officers. Uh, they suggest that they've been addressed, but I don't feel they have been properly addressed. Uh, with the three minutes I've got to talk to you, I can't deal with all the items, but I'm afraid that some of them that are most important to me, I'm now presenting to you. One of them is the fact that um, 
blue badge parking spaces on this design, there are only eight open to the public. Although there are more, they're not all open to the public. And, uh, uh, yes, today I actually visited the square and there were 21 blue card, blue badge, disabled people using the, the area. So therefore there's a lack of numbers. I have pointed out this to the council leader and he agrees with me, but why are the key schemes being presented with less? I don't know. I understand there's a restricted space and I don't, I don't disagree with that, but there are other ways of providing it. The council owned the Harvey Centre. The Harvey Centre's got disabled spaces in it, but you can't access them to Playhouse Square. You can only access them through the Harvey Centre. So therefore, they should be looking with the money that they've got, all this millions of pounds they've got, of providing a lift on the end of joining Playhouse Square. That will link in the disabled sparsing spaces. You can't pay to go in the car park from that end. They should be put in on that end. It's simple little things like that that I'm objecting to. They should be looking at that. The other item, the major item, is the mix of the commercial vehicles and the domestic vehicles going down that road with a children's play area. Most dangerous mixture for it all. And I can't understand why the, the county um, transport officer has not shown objections to this. All you've got to do is to stop the children running in the road. There's not even a barrier between the, both ends of the children's park to stop the children from running out on the road. Uh, it's a simple thing, you put a chicane there. Not only will it stop children running out, it'll stop ch cyclists cycling through it, the e-scooters going through it. It's just a matter of common sense. The other thing is not stopping any vehicles going down the road that are not here to service the areas there. There should be some form of control. And, and you think this has got to be solved at this purpose. And lastly, I would say the residential unit, the building regulations are being changed. By 2026, you could have two staircases to buildings of that height. They've been designed with one staircase in. Surely we should have them in there now. You're not going to do retrospective putting another staircase in by 2026, surely. These are sort of basic things that should have been looked at before this application is presented. And I appeal to the members to defer the application and look at all these items and make sure the application's well presented, not with all these other issues. Is that, have I finished my time? Yeah. Time's up, Sorry. I'm okay. right. Thank you very much, Mr Leverett. I had to rush. I do apologise that I've got to actually leave the meeting because I've got another meeting to go to, but okay. I will stay as long as I can. We shan't Thank stop you. you. The second speaker I have is uh, Mr Martin Harris. Can you hear me? <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. First and foremost, St Paul's and I are enthusiastic for and welcome the proposals. The benefits have been well rehearsed and we agree, including the anticipated enhancement to St Paul's, not least as we work towards applying for a Grade 2 star listing upgrade. The plans are consistent with our current upgrade works. They engage well with the potential to enhance St Paul's as a destination venue and we are grateful that the proposal opens up views to the church from the west and its new taller structures have been kept at a distance. In the light of this very positive recommendation, in your deliberations and to help the plans be effective, we would ask you to consider the following points. Rare parking. This is more important than immediately obvious, and whilst we welcome vehicle-free emphasis, St Paul's will be further removed from the public highway. Adjacent and available parking is critical to viability and finance, which depend on good use of the building. It is expensive to run, and parking is critical to this, and our ability to maintain the building. Our overall income of circa 100,000 a year, a large proportion of which comes from donations, is barely adequate at the moment. A white elephant would soon be a dead elephant. The maintaining of the building depends on there being ready, immediate and close access for deliveries for a wide range of purposes, catering, large items such as tables, equipment, supplies for an event and so forth, which are mostly too heavy or bulky to carry any distance, 
and its function also depends on ready access for clergy who frequently need to arrive at the last minute or depart promptly, e.g. to the crematorium. This is in addition to the more obvious funerals and marriages and is Monday to Monday, right through the week. Accordingly, the viability of the site requires, first, clear control of parking spaces by St Paul's so they are not used by the general public. Two, strongly managed access to this area from College Square so it does not become a traffic log jam. Signage will be insufficient. Three, as much parking as reasonably possible. The number of parking spaces proposed is barely adequate given that we need to provide for our tenant two clergy users and deliveries and we would request that at least two extra parking spaces be included either behind or on the northern side which perhaps gives opportunities and there be conditions to address all these aspects. There has also been the suggestion of some reserved free parking in the Harvey Centre for church users, and this would alleviate and be very welcome, though it would not solve the overall issue. Parking on the north side would be especially helpful for major deliveries to the main doors and also the north door, vital for community meals. Secondly, front of church just to point out that this area belongs to the church, as does the terrace area, both of which are incorporated in the plans. Mr Harris, you have had your three minutes. I've please. had the three minutes. We well welcome done, limousines. Yes. Can I just buy attention to that? And can I just urge that the, profit, the pocket handkerchief trees be maintained and that lighting be improved as much as possible? But overall, all in the context of a very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, James Gardner, who's the applicant or agent? Agent. So if you press the red button. Thank you very much. You've got three minutes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Following the award of nearly £20 million from the Leveling Up Fund in January 2023, significant engagement of wide-ranging stakeholder groups and residents has taken place in developing the application you will be considering this evening. This engagement has allowed the design team to bring forward a scheme that not only provides the opportunity for expansion of cultural provision in the town, but also represents a significant piece of regeneration that will contribute to meeting the ambitions of the Town Centre Master Plan Framework adopted in March 22 with accessibility and inclusivity at its heart. The new facilities included within the design are impressive by any comparison and provides an enviable backdrop to increase resident participation, drive visitor numbers and support growth of the creative economy in our town. Amongst other things, the design includes a live perform performance venue, a music school, recording studio, flexible studio spaces for all manner of cultural activities maker spaces and an exciting new home for our Gibbard Gallery, bringing visual arts to the quarter. Beyond those inclusions sit significant public realm improvements and event space with much needed urban greening and sustainable urban drainage systems, improved legibility and connection to other areas of the town, upgrades to the underpass at Haydens Road, new access road and taxi rank to drive pedestrian focus, improved accessible parking, meeting fit for purpose modern standards absent at present. A residential development that creates homes and acts as an architectural edging to the quarter and much needed pocket park and play area for this area of the town. Underpinning all of this design, of course, is the consideration and priority given to improving the setting of the wonderful St Paul's Church, an important and iconic heritage asset, as well as the landmark building of the Playhouse. This design not only creates opportunities for visitors to enjoy the new adjoining spaces, but also gives St Paul's the the backdrop and environment it richly deserves. The cultural quarter represents an opportunity to deliver a significant cultural provision and co contribute to wider town centre regeneration and this application is a huge step in realising those ambitions. Thank you. Thank you Mr Gardner. Members, questions? Councillor Morrison. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me, Chair? Okay. I have a number of questions, predictably. 
So uh, I may jump about a bit, so I, I crave your indulgence. First of all, the trees. The trees and the handkerchief tree has been mentioned already, and we're told in the papers that there, are two, there will be two commemorative trees. These are guaranteed, or are they guaranteed? Are the six extra trees guaranteed? And what kind will they be? What size? Will they be saplings? In other words, will they replace more or less what we have already? And um, I understand that reference is made to this in condition 26, but it's fairly vaguely worded at the moment. Shall I ask Ross to deal so with that? So that's question number question one. First. Yes, we'll just do them one at a time. Thank you. Um, yes, so the, I understand there's 20, there's, there'll be 33 trees, and um, the, the two commemorative trees are the handkerchief trees, and they will be relocated. Does that help? Yes. And then on the landscaping, we've got a condition on there because they've only provided an indicative landscape plan at the moment, so it just states trees, bushes, whatnot. So the condition will require them to submit those details, which will require us then to discharge that condition. So we will be able to consult again on that, on that matter. OK. OK, okay thank you. So yeah. substantial, perhaps. Um, I, don't, I wonder if you could give me a definition of less than substantial harm. So it's a definition in the national planning policy framework. So um, if, if, if um, development is considered to cause less than substantial harm, it means that it's not very substantial, but we then, as a local authority, have to weigh that impact with the benefits of the scheme. So because it's only considered less than substantial, we've then gone, well, there's 100% affordable homes with all the regeneration um, benefits of the scheme, therefore that's deemed acceptable. And just to clarify on that, the reason why is because if you'd seen the viewpoints and the image, it's not a great image, but um, it's because from viewpoint two, you can't see the building, you can't see the church as well. So it's only because of that viewpoint, but it better frames the building overall. Yes, okay, uh, I think I'm with you. Um, and I notice early in the report that we have here that the lead local flood authority expressed some concern initially. What was the concern? I understand that it has been addressed, but what was the perceived problem at that point? It's, again, quite a technical matter on the flood risk. Um, so the applicant uh, instructed their flood risk consultants to provide further information to clarify their points or their queries and that's resulted in them with moving that holding objection and then imposing the conditions which are in the report. So I can't, I couldn't explain to you what the technical details were but it has resulted in the, the LLFA removing that objection so that's the most important thing in this case. So the concern has been addressed and rectified? Yes. <coughs> Um, some important points were made by previous speakers, one of them uh, to do with parking. parking. First of all, disabled parking spaces, whether we have sufficient in the plans, and the suggestion is that we don't. Uh, and in fact, the gentleman who spoke maybe proposed a possible solution. So what is your response to that? So the applicant specifies that there was there is eight existing spaces in the area at the moment therefore those eight have been retained an additional five would be provided to serve the new accessible units in the flats I'm not sure where the 20 ones come from I'm not sure whether that's just informally but informally parked um, in that area but as I say it was our understanding that there's only eight formal spaces there so they have been reprovided like for like all right, like for like, that's definitely, we're certain of that. Yes. Absolutely certain. Yes, yes. okay. Um, and an observation was made about the parking available at the church, church parking and access. Both of those extremely important points, I would suggest. So what is your response to those or that? Well, the application pro 
provides two standard spaces for users of the church, whoever they may be. And I believe there is um, uh, um, a loading bay or an additional parking space on the north elevation of the church. Um, but the applicant has only provided those spaces for the church. Um, but there's also very limited space in that area. Um, so, with so in the in the new car park that's proposed to the west of the pocket park, there is ten spaces in there. So there will be the, there's five for the units, five for everyone else, and then there's the other three and two standard behind the church. And as you can imagine, it's quite a tight area in there as it is, and the tracking shows that it only just works. Can I can I move on to somebody else? For and just a couple more. Of course, but then, yeah. while I'm talking, they're probably formulating even better questions. I'm sure they are really clever questions. Um, another observation was made about um, the absence or perceived absence of a barrier in order to protect children who are in the play, the open area, and maybe that isn't sufficiently visible in the plans. So this was a concern of mine, actually, throughout the application, was the potential impact between... Um, the proposed access road on the entrance to the, po the pocket park. Um, the best way that we, well, uh, the applicant has come up with is to create a wider turning circle. So that would limit the amount of vehicles needing to go beyond that point. So it should only be limited to servicing vehicles, which use it at the moment, and anyone using the parking spaces to the rear of the church. So if anyone does drive down there or, taxi, or taxis go down there or um, refuse collection vehicles, that turning circle is now enlarged for them to turn around before they reach the pocket park. In terms of the barriers and whatnot, they are not provided as, at the moment, but I have put a condition on it. I don't remember which one it is now. There's a condition. It's condition 16, and if you refer to the addendum that I've submitted. So the condition reads, prior to the installation of the approved pocket park, the developer shall submit detailed drawings and specifications of the proposed equipment and surface treatments, signage and fencing to minimize the risk of conflict between vehicles and pedestrians. And this needs to be approved in writing by us as the local authority. And the approved details shall be implemented before first use of the pocket park. So, sorry, so there will be fencing. Yeah. In other words, the children will be protected because I'm sure yes, so, so people will worry about that. That will, be, that will ultimately be determined when they come to discharge that condition. But my vision of that would be that they would have a barrier. So where the pocket park is and the path goes through the centre, there would be um, gates there to stop children running out in front of the road. And that was, as I say, that was a considerable concern of mine as well. So I wanted to make sure that that was dealt with in the best way possible. But because, be sorry, I should say, just be, because, the, because of the scheme, when, when they discharge that condition, they'll be able to focus in on the park and then show it much better and be able to design the, the, the fencing around that road and the park. Yeah. And finally, <laughs> very welcome words, I know. Um, the, the working hours, I, I noticed that changes have been made to quite a number of the conditions, including the one that concerns working hours and usually we're a bit more restrictive in our approach but these are very generous working hours so are we certain that no one is going to be disturbed or inconvenienced or otherwise uh, made to suffer? Ultimately it's a town centre location so there are there's commercial activity ongoing uh, throughout the day so I felt that a, a general condition from 7am um, until 11 p.m. for the commercial floor space at um, ground level of the residential block was acceptable. And then f for block E, that would be until midnight. It I is in, amended in the, I think, believe it's amended in the addendum. 36. I think it's yes, 36, yes. And that would be until midnight. Now, no servicing would be allowed outside those hours with the exception of um, the Playhouse extension to allow any departing touring companies to leave there after a performance but that's considered 
accept more acceptable because it's further away and it's a it's a 100% commercial building. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Leppard. Thank you, Chair. I have two questions. Um, one is regarding the comments made by um, the first speaker, Mr. Leverett. I think you, I think you raised some very pertinent uh, observations. And rather than to defer the application, could some of these not be incorporated as conditions? Uh, yes, potentially. Um, do you such, want to as, uh, sorry, such as uh, a machine, pay machine at the end of uh, the Harvey Centre car park. I'm just giving that as an example. I mean, another one I would have said would have been fencing, but of course we've covered that already. Um, but is it possible to just give some consideration to those points, some of those points you raised? Yeah. yeah, we could raise it with the applicant, but it's not something we could impose as a condition. Oh, fair enough, I understand that. Be, yeah. Okay. I think you have to deal with what's before you. I agree. And I, I, I you know, accept that answer. Uh, I'm sure things like that the applicant will pick up on. Okay, fine. I just wanted to you know, highlight it. The second question um, is actually not mentioned in here, although it's part of the application. Um, we've heard for a long time a demand in the town centre um, for a replacement venue to the, to the former square where we had live music. And I understand from this there is a provision for live performances. What I would wanted to know was, it, does anybody know what the capacity was of the square and what the capacity could be of this new venue? I believe it was 300 on the previous, on the other one, and it's 350. The, the Playhouse extension could accommodate 350 patrons at full capacity. Okay, so it's, it would be greater than the square was. Okay, fine, that's good news. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Carter. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question relates to the provision of accessible M43 dwellings. Uh, the report states. Um, the development uh, proposes to provide five <coughs> dwellings, which equates to a provision of 10.6%. Uh, the reason for the shortfall from uh, the plan requirement of 15% is due to limited parking provision. Um, I have to say um, that accessible housing uh, in a town centre location uh, is uh, a very important um, uh, location for people with disabilities because you know that they are right on top of the town uh, with all the facili facilities that, that, that it provides um, and <clears throat> shuffling around a few parking spaces I don't think is sufficient grounds to uh, reduce the number of uh, M43 compliant dwellings um, as I say <clears throat> you know shuffling a few, a few parking spaces around okay um, space is limited, um, but that is the nature of the beast. It is, it is designed <coughs> to be uh, a vehicle-free um, uh, site, um, as is much of the town centre already. So I don't, I don't have an issue with that. Um, <coughs> but I think it's really important that we get as many accessible properties into the town centre uh, as we can. I mean, the report goes on to say, well, uh, there are other sites across the town where there is a much greater provision, um, but that doesn't answer the, the, the issue of actual access to the town, uh, to the town centre. Now, <coughs> um, I would be moving an amendment um, to increase the number of dedicated parking spaces in order to increase the number of, uh, the number of dwellings. Is that going to work? What's, sorry, Councillor, what's your question? Or what is your question? If I proposed additional, additional parking spaces for additional uh, M43 compliant properties, would that work? To actually increase the number of, 
compliant properties? No, no, it wouldn't. So, so the um, so it was something I raised with the applicant um, in terms of the provision of M43 dwellings being accessible dwellings, and the local plan suggests that 15% of um, affordable dwellings should be M43. Um, the the applicant was keen to make sure that each um, of the units were provided with their own accessible parking space, and, and if they were to provide any more, then they wouldn't be able to provide car parking because of the um, size of the proposed parking area and limitations on the site as a whole. Um, and I balanced that with the provision of other M43 dwellings provided on other um, affordable housing sites provided by the council and considered that that was acceptable in this on this occasion. Okay, Councillor. You know, nothing else? It's, 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 well, I have, it's another, have, a, have, another, have another question. Um, this is a detailed planning application, and if we approve it tonight, they can actually start digging holes tomorrow. Uh, but what I've also noticed is there is a whole stack of planning conditions picking up on the various issues actually in the report. Mm. Um, and <clears throat> I was just a bit concerned um, how long it's going to take the applicant to go through um, all of these 41 conditions before they, they actually get formal approval to start. <laughs> Um, I felt that the conditions imposed were fair and reasonable. Um, I couldn't comment on how long it would take them to discharge. Ultimately, it's up to them how quickly they move. Um, but it's also felt because, as particularly this is a, a town centre regeneration scheme, you, scheme using government money, that um, everything was dealt with as best as possible. And if anything could be dealt with by condition, um, then it could be. Um, most of these are... Um, have been requested by our consultees um, and a, a lot of them are prior to occupation and compliance conditions as well. The, the ones that are prior to commencement are, are standard. So, so, sorry, Chair. So just, just to clarify, um, some, of the, some, some of these are sort of straightforward conditions which apply uh, to most applications but a number are only for prior to occupation, which is obviously going to be, which is obviously going to be some way down the road um, uh, of actual construction. So you, know, you don't expect them all responded to in, in, in the first week, but they will be spread over a period. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more questions? If it's OK. Um, just for clarification, I suppose, the Playhouse, will that be closed during the...? No, it won't. Um, it is, um, it's my understanding that the Playhouse would remain open and the access to that whilst the development works are taking place will be dealt with in the construction management plan to ensure there was continued access. Thank you. Thank you. There was a question asked about um, two stairwells. Um, can you just clarify that with the current legislation? Yes, that's fine. Um, if you turn to... Bear with me. If you turn to page 14 of the report, we consulted the health and safety executive. Um, the building... Is, it does, is, is not seven storeys or 18 metres or more, and therefore there is no requirement to provide a second staircase on this occasion. Thank you. Um, stairwells, the lift, traffic, Harvey Centre. No, I think, that's, I think you've covered most of the questions that have been asked. So, you've got a question, sir? What about the working times, Joe? What about the working times? Are you, are you happy with the, the times that they're working? The, the, the early start? 
You're comfortable. Is it coming to that now? Okay. Yeah, during the clarif Um Just on the, if members, if you bear with me for a minute, on the commercial operating hours, um, this is a rent residential development as well. Um, I wanted to propose that the, instead of seven o'clock, it's an eight o'clock start, because um, it is a lot of residential, it's 47 flats, and I, so I'm proposing that. Can I have a seconder? I'm second. So can we take a vote on that? Yes. You agree that? Yep. So we was happy with that, so that will so I'll amend that to eight o'clock start just to give a bit, bit more comfort. So that reduces. Debate members then. Councillor Livins. Chair, um, I think this is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing going on in the town and obviously because I'm so connected with the arts, so it, you know, I find this absolutely wonderful that this is going to happen. But apart from that, I was obviously very concerned um, before the actual debate earlier on about the a question of um, blue badgings and parking. Um, it seems as if, um, from what the officer said, there will be another, enough blue badge parking there. And um, I hope, above everything else, that there's going to be enough parking for everybody. But the actual site and the, the proposal for the site is absolutely wonderful, and I really, really can't wait for it to start to happen. So, so I will be obviously voting for this. Councillor Leopard. I think we've spoken a lot about parking, but we should not lose sight of the fact that we have the Harvey Sands car park very close by, and we also have the Water Gardens car park, you know, very much within walking distance. So I don't think we should see this as though it's something in complete isolation to the environment that it sits within. Overall, though, this, this town has a strong heritage in the arts, and I think this is a most welcome initiative within the context of the regeneration of the town centre. It will bring people to the town. It will enhance the offering to, the, to various art, artistic groups, music, whatever there are, drama, that already operate in the town. It will be a magnet. And um, I think we should endorse this wholeheartedly. Thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with the, the um, comments made in the debate. I just think it's really important to say that the attendance here this evening shows how much interest there is in this development. And not to take away, it might be for the other small houses, but I would assume it's mainly to do with our town centre redevelopment. I think it's really important that once this passed tonight, um, the applicant and everyone involved continues to engage with the partners that may be using that building, that we accept that we might make changes. I think the more that we go through the development phase and the more that we promote the, the, the thing, the, the building and the whole scheme, people will have their comments and this is a lot of money to be spent and a really big development to our team. So we just really need to keep listening to what people are saying and, and make sure that it really is a town wide um, project and people are involved, but I do welcome it. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else want to debate? No? Okay. I'll, I'll sure. Oh, Councillor Carter. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, it, it's, it's a, <coughs> you know, for the reasons already been stated, it's a, it, it, it's a very welcome <coughs> application. Uh, it's a very large application, and there's an awful lot of detail in there. Um, Whilst uh, you know, it's, a, it's, you know, it's a very lengthy report, um, there's a whole pile of documents underneath this uh, from various con uh, consultants on, uh, on various a aspects, <coughs> noise, drainage, and, uh, and what have you. Uh, obviously, I, I am concerned over the uh, lack of uh, accessible buildings. Um, but <coughs> I think overall, as uh, Councillor Watson said, uh, you know, there's an awful lot of information here, an awful lot of detail, and there's still an awful lot still to be resolved. So, I, you know, those who have raised uh, concerns should not despair at the moment. Yeah. Um, but uh, as Councillor Watson said, 
to maintain dialogue uh, and you know, so we'll get some more of these details actually ironed out uh, and so we'll make it a, uh, make it a, a much better a plan. But uh, uh, <coughs> overall, it, it, you know, it's you know we're getting another 47 uh, council properties afford, uh, at, uh, at affordable rents mm -hmm. that we didn't have before. Um, we're getting a wonderful new um, arts and uh, theatre uh, and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Uh, location, studios, and so forth, <coughs> um, which can only <coughs> enhance the reputation of Harlow. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Nobody else? Uh, I'll say, say very little. It's all been said, hasn't it? You know, this is a, a great opportunity to develop that area and turn it into a, a playhouse quarter. We could use the word playhouse. People can go and play. Uh, there are some working. Um, and I think you know a lot's been said about parking and traffic, but there, there's very little there now. We don't want to increase that traffic because there's a safety problem. So what's what's there now has been replicated. The Harvey Centre is a separate multi-storey building. There's plenty of parking there if they want to go in, and that's a separate entrance from this development. So it's kept separately. So I think overall. Um, you know, the parking provision for the blue badge holders, accessible parking as they call it now, is, is, is extra than they've got now. Um, I understand the, the church's situation, but they've got, they won't have any less than they've got now. So the, the, the church goers can still use the Harvey Centre. And so um, they may be not quite as easy to access it, but it's, at the moment it's, 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 uh, people are probably accessing it perhaps when they shouldn't do. You know, because it's yellow lined. Anyway, I, th I won't say any more. I think it's a it's a great chance, it's a great opportunity to develop this area for the for the for everybody. And, and I think, oh, yeah. So if we go to the recommendation then, which is on page 38, the recommendation is to approve. Now we've had one amendment to the commercial hours, seven o'clock. So we're approving that, and. The supplementary document, which we've all got, um, and it's, so it's including those amendments to, in the supplementary document, as against the ones that are in the main main report. So is that everybody up? So, so all those in favour of the recommendation, it's unanimous. Thank you very much.